Hello, everybody. My name is Scott Mora, and I'm an associate professor at the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Aparthi Vijay, and I'm a recent grad from UC Berkeley. And today, we will be presenting to you our project uh, supported by the ENL Foundation on city bus electrification, an open data-driven tool. And this is work that's also been, been done in collaboration with Akshat Jain, an undergraduate at UC Berkeley. And then from ENL, we have David Rodriguez, Giuseppe Ferrara, Luigi Lanuzza, Erika Melelkas, Sergio Gambacorta, and Christian Zuberti. So let's get started first with uh, some motivation, and then we'll make clear our research objective. After that, we'll describe the open data we work with. Then from open data, we can then talk about the routes and trip analytics from the open data. Then uh, we'll spend some time talking about modeling. After that, we'll do a walkthrough of the software tool. And finally, we'll show some results and summarize those. So motivation. Just a few months ago, when we walked outside uh, in the Bay Area, the sky was completely orange. And uh, the reason for this had to do with air quality. Now, in this case, not due to electric buses, but due to wildfires, which are unfortunately coming too common of an occurrence um, in California uh, as a result of uh, anthropogenic climate change. And so this, of course, is our own local example of the effects of emissions due to human activity. However, it's quite striking because of this bright orange color. In fact, I have a photo in the lower right, which is a photo from uh, a movie called Blade Runner 2049, which depicts Los Angeles, California and the year 2049 in some dystopian future in which humankind has destroyed the planet and every single day looks like this. And it's quite shocking how similar that movie is uh, to what it looked like in San Francisco just a few months back. Of course, this is our, our local example and there's plenty of examples of how climate change is uh, affecting our, our cities and the health of people. Now, coupled with this, we have an effect of urbanization. In short, more people are living in cities and urban areas uh, today than people that aren't living in urban areas. And this urbanization trend has increased. What we've done is we've taken some, um, some data here where you can see, for example, the, the entire world. And the entire world uh, has basically about 50% of the entire world that's about 50%, existed in urban areas around the year 2010. And now more than half of the world's population lives in urban areas. What we also did is collect uh, some, some countries in which uh, we're aware that NL has some activities in. And you can see that there's this rapid ur urbanization, including locations where bus electrification is being considered or has been deployed. For example, in Latin America, Chile, Colombia. Um, you also have in Europe, Spain, and Italy. Uh, and then you have in, in Asia, China, which is urbanizing very quickly, even, even India. And so urbanization uh, is a worldwide trend that's occurring. More people are living closer together in dense areas. So uh, this leads to buses as one form of transportation among many types of uh, forms of transportation. And to decarbonize these, we're interested in electrifying them. But a natural question to ask is if we're really interested in reducing greenhouse gas emissions from electrification, a natural question to ask would be, uh, do EVs result in actually more greenhouse gas emissions than internal combustion vehicles because of the manufacturing of uh, these electric vehicles and their batteries. So this is a nice paper from a few years back in which they did a life cycle greenhouse gas emissions analysis where they looked at internal combustion uh, vehicles along with full battery electric vehicles. And of course, what you can see here is that uh, 
the total greenhouse gas emissions from these EVs in these different cases is less than the internal uh, combustion vehicles. However, there are things to carefully consider. For example, uh, this, this uh, light blue uh, hatched area considers the greenhouse gas emissions that comes from the first battery power plant. And the other thing that uh, you might consider is these blue bars, which account for the greenhouse gas emissions due to the electric power plants that are creating the electricity that is used to charge those vehicles. It is non-trivial. And in fact, if you're looking at the entire US grid mix or the California grid mix, it can change. So in California, for example, they ha happen to have a uh, generator mix with a lower average greenhouse gas emissions than the United States as an av as a total. So uh, this is uh, important to consider when we're thinking about uh, life cycle greenhouse gas emissions when comparing internal combustion vehicles with battery electric. But um, what's easy to see is in in most cases you find that EVs result in less greenhouse gas emissions, but is highly dependent on manufacturing. And it also depends on how the electricity is generated, things to consider. Okay, now what are the economics? This has to also make economic sense. And let me highlight two things. First, on uh, the top, what we have is data from Bloomberg New Energy Finance that looks at the cost of battery energy storage from the year uh, uh, 2013 to 2020. And what you can see is at the cell level, battery costs have dropped now to almost $100 per kilowatt hour. And at the pack level, they're $137 per kilowatt hour. And this is a dramatic drop. In fact, uh, it's not shown here, but in 2010, the pack level cost was close to $1,000 per kilowatt hour. So this has dropped by a factor of 10 almost. And right now, the US Department of Energy is actually targeting 80 dollars per kilowatt hour for a 300 mile battery electric vehicle. This is the US Department of Energy target, which is designed because this is the cost at which a 300 mile battery electric vehicle becomes economically on par with an internal combustion engine vehicle. So you can see we're, we're closely approaching that, you know, without any subsidies. Uh, another analysis that I think is quite nice is from this total cost of ownership analysis by startup company EIQ Mobility, where they took data from vehicle, light duty vehicles in this case, from across the US. And what they found is if you consider a 10 year total cost of ownership, more than half of light duty vehicles across the United States, 57% in particular, have a total cost of ownership over 10 years that is less than their internal combustion engine counterpart. So even with today's prices, uh, there are cases, a non-trivial amount, in fact, more than half in this uh, study that have a lower total cost of ownership than their ICE equivalents. Now, the market for electric buses in particular is also quite compelling. So this again are as figures taken from uh, the EV outlook uh, study by Bloomberg New Energy Finance. And what you can see here on the left is the share of new vehicle sales by segment. And uh, what it's showing here is in, in the year 2020, almost half new buses are electric. And it's projected that by the year 2040, this is gonna approach uh, 75, 80% due to government policies. So for example, um, in the state of California, it's just one example, uh, essentially all new city buses need to be electric and that's an example of uh, one policy. Meanwhile, um, as those new vehicles are penetrating into the market, the share of the total global fleet is gonna become more electric and buses are gonna lead that uh, because of aggressive policies at the at the state uh, and municipal levels to uh, improve air quality within urban areas. So all these together really create a compelling case in terms of economics, health, emissions, 
uh, for electrifying bus fleets, which leads us to our research objective. So the research objective uh, for this NL sponsored research is to construct a screening tool to assess the benefits and costs of electrifying bus routes in major cities across the world using open data. And let me emphasize something very important here. In the literature, there are many studies that look at, uh, for, for example, single cities and specific routes, say in New York City um, or in Los Angeles, and they look at the costs of electrifying buses in those cities on specific routes, and they do a very deep analysis in those cities. What we're doing is different in the sense that uh, this is really a screening tool. So it's a preliminary step to that in which what we'd like to do is leverage open data, open data that represents uh, uh, bus agencies in major cities across the world. And from that open data, can we come up with essentially a rough calculation for the benefits and costs of electrifying routes to use as a ranking tool so we can identify which are the cities and which are the routes within those cities that are most promising for electrifying the bus fleet. And then after that screening is done, one can then interact with that agency, get a lot more data and information and get more precise calculations for these performance metrics. So this is a screening tool. But the key performance indicators that we're interested in is the, the total cost of ownership <coughs> calculated as a net present value over, for example, a, a 12 year period. We'll also look at the greenhouse gas emissions, um, which will also then lead us to considering the, the, the healthcare costs or the healthcare impacts. Um, uh, and these are the three performance metrics that we shall focus on. Okay, so let's jump into the open data next. So the first piece of open data that is critical is the Global Transit Feed Specification, or GTFS for short. GTFS is a common format for public transportation schedules and associated geographic info. And it includes some, uh, some static information like um, the routes, trips, trips are trips um, that are taken within each route. That can also include stops, their locations and times, and, and a calendar schedule for that. Now, a benefit of GTFS is it's open data. Uh, many transit agencies across the world make this accessible. It's widely used, and the, the data tables are mostly standardized. I say mostly standardized because uh, a negative of this is that there are, in fact, small differences across transit agencies. So although it's an open data format, it is there is no validation and certification, which means um, there can be missing or erroneous data, which needs to be cleaned and carefully managed. Um, another issue is uh, not all agencies post real-time data, which limits the granularity and specificity of the analysis that can be done. Nevertheless, what we did in this project is try to wrangle this data, at least the most common format of it, uh, to use to make uh, rough calculations, but calculations for cities across the, the world on total cost of ownership, greenhouse gas emissions, and healthcare impacts. Now, we also use other data sources that helped us with the various calculations. For example, we use the Google Maps Elevation API to compute energy consumption along routes that have elevation change. Uh, Upadi also figured out how to use the Distance Matrix API to compute the driving distance between stops rather than the distance as a bird flies, it's the distance as the bus drives. Uh, so we can accurately calculate energy consumption in addition, it's important to have uh, to use open data on the outside temperature because it turns out that a non-trivial amount of energy consumption is due to heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, especially in cities with extreme temperatures uh, like Boston, which is one that we studied in detail. All right, let's jump into the route and trip analytics. And here I'd just like to give you a sense of working with this open GTFS data. So first, there are many, many routes that one could consider in one transit agency. What we did in this study is focus 
ourselves on specific routes, namely routes that have high stop and go traffic and those that were urban. So for example, those that were in the suburban or peri-urban areas, uh, we didn't focus on those because there's such an interest in improving air quality within the densest part of cities. Now, another challenge working with the GTFS data is for any given route, say route 201 here in Boston, the route is fixed. However, the trips along this route are not the same. In fact, different trips on Route 201 can skip stops. They can interline, that is connect with a, a, another route. They could terminate early, et cetera. So in fact, all the trips within a given route are heterogeneous, and that makes it very difficult to compute the energy consumption for each individual uh, trip, because you, because for a given route, you could have hundreds, thousands, um, tens of thousands of trips for a given route, depending on the time period you're, you're looking over. So uh, something very clever that Upadi did is uh, to realize that although the trips are different, uh, they're similar in some sense. So the solution to this was to cluster um, all the trips for a given route into a small set of representative trips, just a handful, and then compute energy based on these trip clusters that can represent uh, energy consumption for all trips within this uh, route. Okay, so with that, we now like to give you an idea of the modeling. And here we're going to give you a flavor without going through all the equations or details, just to give you a sense of what was done in this project. So first, let's talk about the energy model to calculate how much energy is needed for an electric bus to complete its uh, trip. So um, first we have the electricity consumption by the bus, and there's gonna be some losses due to the charger inefficiency. Then the electricity that's consumed uh, by the bus when charging is then going to exit through various sources. So we have uh, electricity that is consumed due to the vehicle dynamics. This is the tractive uh, energy consumption by the bus which is comprised of acceleration and regeneration. So there can be a negative energy consumption here. Elevation gain and loss, a rolling resistance, and we also need to overcome air drag. <coughs> there will also be losses, uh, energy losses due to powertrain inefficiencies. Another form of energy consumption is within the interior. And this is very important. It's non-trivial um, and very important to consider, especially in cities that are very hot or very cold. So namely, what Upadi has done is considered the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, plus all the thermal losses, including ventilation, infiltration from opening windows and doors. Um, there's also heat generation due to passengers sitting inside the bus who each uh, generate heat themselves that needs to be dispelled or can actually contribute to heating the bus when it's a very cold day. Also, there's auxiliary electrical systems. These are for the lights. Um, the sound systems, all the electronics that help run the bus. And, and that, in fact, is also non-trivial. So just to give you a sense, uh, this is a case um, in which we're plotting the different, uh, a breakdown of the energy consumption within a bus actually on a very cold day. And what you can see here is that just the tractive component is going to result in 1.2 kilowatt hours per kilometer. Regeneration is non-trivial. You can recover back uh, 0.2 kilowatt hours per kilometer. But then auxiliary, this is uh, from all the electronics that run the bus, is non-trivial. In fact, it can contribute 0 0.9 uh, kilowatt, uh, kilowatt hours per kilometer. And the HVAC system can be another 0.55 kilowatt hours per kilometer. So uh, incorporating these effects are all important. Uh, to get an accurate representation. Let, let me also mention that this is considering quite a cold day where the heating is running uh, persistently to maintain a comfortable temperature within the cabin. Okay, now let's now talk about a challenge with using these first principles models and how machine learning can be a solution to that challenge. So. The energy model, it turns out, requires high-frequency time series data that we don't have. Namely, 
if we go back here to accurately calculate the acceleration and regeneration, for example, we need to have time series data of speed and acceleration. We would also like to have time series data of the HVAC on off state, when the windows and doors open, maybe hyperlocal information on, on the road grade. But we don't have this with open data, which makes this project challenging from other studies. So the solution here was to use machine learning to help address this. Specifically, uh, what we did was train a machine learning model that's been trained on the first principles model that we just discussed, but applied to a standard drive cycle, namely the Manhattan bus drive cycle shown here. And here you can see the speed in meters per second as a function of time in seconds. Uh, and this becomes our truth model, if you will, where we can use a first principles model in the Manhattan drive cycle with varying road grades and bus weights due to passengers and varying outside temperatures to compute a high fidelity uh, value for what the energy consumption is. Then we can train this machine learning regression model where given road grade, the loaded weight, basically the number of passengers, and the non-tractive power, that's from the HVAC and the auxiliary, we can use that to estimate what the energy efficiency or inefficiency, if you will, will be in kilowatt hours per kilometer. Now, this is if the drive cycle is a Manhattan drive cycle. But in Boston, the drive cycle is not Manhattan drive cycle. In Milano, the drive cycle is not a Manhattan drive cycle. So that there were there, there will be errors, of course, because um, the Manhattan drive cycle doesn't represent every drive cycle for every bus along every route in every trip in every city. Uh, however, it gives us a way to be able to estimate in a consistent manner what is the energy efficiency um, in these different cities uh, without requiring us to actually get sensor data from buses in these cities. So um, here's just a sample of testing the machine learning regression model where we, uh, what Upadi did was actually um, create a Monte Carlo simulation of this, of a bus driving on the Manhattan drive cycle with many different loaded weights, many different roads grades and many different uh, amounts of non-tractive power. And then uh, we did a training and testing split and then uh, Upadi trained the model on uh, the training data. And this is the result on the testing data. So, so you can see it's a uh, very high fidelity, but of course, keep in mind, this is not, uh, uh, this is with a Manhattan drive cycle and not the driving cycle that a bus would take in, um, uh, in the real world in cities across the world. Uh, for that, we would need more than, than open data. But still, this is a meaningful benchmark to use um, that is at least consistent across cities. Okay, and here are some example results from this model that shows the average energy efficiency, or maybe we can call this inefficiency because it's the kilowatt hours consumed per kilometer driven. So the higher the number, then the more energy is consumed per kilometer driven. And you can see here in Boston, it's about two to two and a half. Uh, kilowatt hours per kilometer, depending on the route. So you can see some routes have low inefficiency, like Route 222, and some have high inefficiency, like uh, Route 210. Here are similar numbers for Milano, um, not as not as much variance, um, but the total inefficiency is uh, is is actually a, a bit higher. Again, uh, we'll highlight that these are at quite cold temperatures and extreme temperature to get a conservative value for what the energy inefficiency would be on a very cold day in which the heater is running. Okay, let's now talk about the financial model. So the total cost of ownership is comprised of two parts. We have the capital costs or CapEx and then the operating costs or OpEx. Now let's focus on the capital costs. Capital costs for the EV are comprised of the bus chassis, that's without the batteries. Then you can consider the bus battery. And here we consider the cost of the 
initial battery when you buy the bus at beginning of life. Then what we found is uh, due to the mileage that these buses will drive in a 12 year lifetime, we consider that there's a one time battery replacement during year seven, essentially halfway through uh, the bus's life. And, and this is based off what we've seen on the degradation of batteries and the total uh, miles or kilometers driven by buses during a 12 year lifetime. And so uh, very typically you'll see that it is uh, necessary to do a one-time replacement of the battery uh, during a 12 year lifetime uh, for, for many routes, not all routes, but many routes. We also consider the charging infrastructure. So that is the um, DC fast chargers for the buses and the associated transformers and electrical infrastructure. Now for diesel, all, that, all that's purchased in terms of CapEx is the bus itself. We, we consider that the fueling infrastructure already exists. Now the operating expenditures are uh, fairly easy to understand. For EVs, we have the charging cost to the electric utility. For diesel, we have the fueling costs to the oil and gas company. There is also operation and maintenance costs associated with the charging of fueling infrastructure and then vehicle operation and maintenance uh, for these uh, buses, either electric or diesel. Some additional notes is in our analysis, we actually consider a varying price trend for diesel fuel and electricity. So for example, in the case study we'll show later, we consider that diesel fuel is rising over time and electricity prices are declining, but that can be adjusted within the model. Here, we do not consider the cost of carbon nor health impact, and we also are not considering end of life uh, or salvage costs. All right, and here are some sample numbers uh, that Upadi has put together in the model. Again, we're considering a lifetime of 12 years. Uh, you can see the, the discount rate in the net present value calculations being shown here. We're consider, considering 50 kilowatts uh, fast chargers. And you can see here some of the uh, various prices that are used. For example, installation of the chargers, um, operation and maintenance. Uh, you can also see the trend here for you know, uh, for example, rising diesel fuel prices or slightly declining electricity prices. The, these, of course, can be adjusted in the analysis. We'll also highlight there's three bus lengths that are considered in the tool, 30, 40, and 60 foot, and then you have their corresponding cost uh, per bus between 300,000 to uh, 600,000 for, for the uh, diesel versions. Okay. Let's now talk about emissions. There's two types of emissions that are considered, CO2 and uh, PM 2.5, or particulate matter uh, that is 2.5 microns or less. Now in CO2 emissions, um, for diesel and electric, we have to introduce a, a bit of terminology. So with diesel uh, CO2 emissions, we first consider the well to tank. And the well to tank considers the emissions associated with oil production, refining, in distribution, that is the emissions associated with going from the well, from the oil well, all the way to the tank within the bus. Then we have CO2 emissions that are associated with the combustion process from combusting diesel fuel uh, within the bus, essentially the tailpipe emissions. Now with electric, there's similar concepts here, but rather than say well to tank, uh, let's consider this as electric generating power plant to battery so this is the CO2 emissions associated with the electric generators. So if the electric generators are coal, for example, then this could actually be uh, quite high. If they're clean uh, uh, electricity generators like solar or wind or nuclear, then uh, this could be zero or a very small number. Then we have the tailpipe emissions or battery to wheels emissions for EVs. And this is actually just gonna be uh, zero because there's no battery to wheels or tailpipe emissions here. Now for PM 2.5, uh, we don't consider any uh, tailpipe emissions for EVs here, uh, but for diesel, there will be tailpipe PM 2.5 emissions associated with the combustion process that is proportional to the vehicle miles traveled. Now from the PM 2.5 emissions, we can then calculate the health impacts 
Now, um, the health impacts, uh, we've, we've quantified in the following sense. So I'd like to introduce this concept of day, disability adjusted life years. Disability adjusted life years refers to the, uh, the years of, of life lost plus the years lived with a disability illness or injury as a result of PM 2.5 emissions. And the idea here is that due to years of life loss and due to years lived with this disability, uh, there's not just healthcare costs, but there's also the cost of an individual being removed from the economy. They're no longer contributing to the economy because of years of life loss or they are suffering from uh, an illness or injury. And so what we've done is taken the PM 2.5 emissions. We then consider how much of those emissions are um, the intake from the population. That is how much the population inhales. This is a number something like 25 parts per million. Then from that, due to respiratory issues, that can result in a disability adjusted life years. And this can be a metric that one considers this disability adjusted life years, or if we consider the statistical value of life, we can then consider an economic impact. So with that, I will then turn it over to uh, Upadi. Uh, I, would, I would now like to give a walkthrough of the tool. So the purpose of the tool is to give you a real-time analysis as to what uh, energy total cost of ownership will be for various routes. Uh, this tool currently uh, does this analysis for two cities, namely Boston and Milan, which were our uh, areas of interest. Uh, I would, uh, the, what you see on the screen is current, is the architecture of our tool, which consists of three components. First is the database where we store all the GDFS data, all the energy consumption and everything, all the models basically. So all the results from the model are stored in these databases. The second is the application layer or the business logic layer, which this layer consists of the or all analysis scripts, uh, how we are calculating TCOs, uh, how we are calculating health impacts, and all and also a, a, a script on the how our app is where built or where it is kept uh, in the system. And third, we have a front end layer which is about how we are presenting the tool. So this is about how what inputs are we taking from the tool and what output we are generating and sending it to the users. Anupati, I'll stop sharing my screen to let you do a walkthrough of the tool. Sure. So uh, what we see in front of us is the tool that we built based on the models and the architecture that I just shared with you. Uh, the tool currently includes uh, the three uh, different types of parameters. First is uh, you can select city and routes which you want to analyze in a given city. Second are the price parameters for a given city. So you can, uh, uh, you can input uh, utility prices, fuel prices, or you can also put demand charges as to what it takes to what, how much utility will charge if you go uh, up to your peak demand. And finally, we also have vehicle parameters, which is what type of buses you want to use for uh, electrifying and what is, the, uh, what is the charging efficiency for these buses. Uh, and eventually we also display the results in the bottom, which I'll, through, which I'll show you through a simulation. So uh, I would like to select uh, Milan as my city for, uh, uh, for a demonstration. And at this point, we have, we have uh, 15 routes for this city. Uh, which I, I, for this simulation, I'll be selecting all the routes so that we can see uh, what all analysis and what results can we get for these routes. Uh, the price per gallon for Milan is around, uh, the fuel price is basically 5.8 uh, gallons, uh, dollar per gallon. The cost of electric bus, uh, I am I'm using a 40 foot electric bus which, which uh, for which the price is roughly around eight hundred thousand dollars. So, that will be our cost of buses, just to see if we are having right units and right decimals. Uh, the utility charges are around 0.23 dollars per kilowatt hour, and the demand charge is taken twenty. We are these are rough values, so this is not this is just for simulation purposes. 
uh, a person can take the real values for these cities and actually calculate what would be the uh, correspondingly right estimate for, for electrification and TCO. So, and I'm using uh, my charger efficiency of 0.95 uh, for this simulation. So as you can see down in the table, uh, you get the following results. So the left side of the table consists of the results for diesel buses, and the right side of the table consists of the results for electric buses. So you can see that the left side consists of the TCO, which is how much it cost uh, to electrify uh, this, uh, this particular route, like route number B95, with seven number of buses. So, uh, and including all the operations, uh, operation and maintenance and overall cost, and then calculated towards the net present value. Uh, the level of service is basically, we are assuming that the buses, we can use buses for various routes. So yes, we are assuming diesel buses satisfy that criteria. The third is the emissions. So we are estimating em emissions per ton for, for year. For, we are estimating CO2 emissions per ton for whole year. So that's what value in this cell corresponds to for this particular route. And then finally, we also consume the health impact with the model which uh, Scott just shared with you all. Uh, on the right side is basically the same values for electric buses. So you can see uh, the TCO for electric buses, the level of service, emissions, and health impacts. Uh, we have a technically feasible column here, which basically shows you some results based on the comparison values in the middle of the table. So at this point, we are assuming that uh, we are comparing if the TCO for electric buses is 100% of the TCO for diesel buses. And since this is not true, the column for the TCO is red. However, if you see the emissions column, we are seeing that if, if electric em emissions due to electric buses are 100% of emissions due to diesel buses or less, we are having a green column here, which says that yes, all the electric buses produce less emissions uh, than diesel buses. Uh, you can you can change the values up to your your own comfort. So if you say if I do a 140% uh, TCO here, we still see most of the buses are red. Uh, I can try with another value as 160. Uh, the 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 value seems to be less, but I can also play with the emissions part. So you can see that if I change emissions to 10%, you can see some some route follow this uh, criteria of having emissions less than 10% of diesel buses. So this is what I wanted to show you how through a simulation of the tool. Uh, you, can, you can use the different values, you can use different parameters and compare which routes can be electrified or are technically feasible either through your their cost of uh, total cost of ownership or through the emissions. Uh, I'll, I'll just I'll now give the uh, this whole to Scott and uh, discuss about the rest of the presentation. Great, thanks, Supati. Okay. Hopefully you can see the slide. Okay, so next let, let's uh, discuss some, some results uh, where you can take that resulting data and do some analysis. So here we're gonna look at Milano and Boston and here's some important uh, input parameters that were used. Uh, what, what I really want to highlight here is uh, across the two cities, they're all basically the same, except you will notice, sorry about that, you will notice that uh, the fuel price in Milan is more than twice that in Boston to reflect the uh, higher diesel prices. I also want to highlight that in this analysis, we're actually considering a worst case scenario in the sense that uh, we're considering the outdoor air temperature in Milan is zero degrees Celsius and the outdoor air temperature in Boston is minus five degrees Celsius. Uh, the reason for this is um, uh, to, to basically do an analysis considering the, the worst case day in terms of energy efficiency in which in this case, the uh, uh, heater would have to be run uh, quite persistently to maintain a comfortable uh, interior environment. Of course, this can be adjusted to a more nominal temperature, um, but then one thing to be careful about is that the energy consumption may not represent those worst case days. Uh, 
So that's important to, to keep in mind. OK, so from the tool, what you can get is a net present value um, for diesel buses in this case and, and for Boston. So on the vertical axis, what you see is the total cost of ownership calculated as a net present value in millions of US dollars. And this is plotted um, for each of the different routes. So you can see, for example, Route 238 has a very high total cost of ownership, whereas Route, uh, say, uh, 212 has a low cost of ownership. And you can also see how that total cost of ownership breaks down in terms of the capital costs, the vehicle maintenance, uh, fueling costs, and infrastructure O&M. This is for Boston uh, with diesel buses. And then this is the same calculation for electric buses in Boston. An important thing to get across here actually is that the total cost of ownership is quite heterogeneous uh, across these routes. Now, um, of course, at this point, what would be interesting to look at is compare diesel and electric head to head on given routes. Now we've done this, um, and in this case, we're actually looking at Milan just to give a different flavor for these results for diesel and electric. And for example, here you have total cost of ownership along route B59 for a diesel bus and an electric bus. Now what you can see here is actually the total cost of ownership for electric is higher than it is for diesel, having to do with the fact that the, the, the capital cost is uh, more expensive for the uh, for the electric bus. Um, and unfortunately, the fueling cost is not sufficiently low to offset the uh, fueling cost for these diesel buses. Now, this case might have to do in particular with the uh, set of parameters and the fact that we assumed a worst case day in which the temperature was zero degrees Celsius. Um, however, you can see how the tool is quite flexible. You can adjust those parameters to get different results. Uh, to find routes or scenarios in which uh, the TCO for electric could be less uh, than diesel. Uh, this is a similar plot, but for Boston, where you can compare head to head different routes with diesel or electric, and you can see how they break down in terms of capital costs and their fueling costs. Okay, now um, here we're showing the total cost of ownership of electric as a percentage of the diesel TCO. So for example, uh, suppose that uh, you're interested in electrifying the bus, but you want that the total cost of ownership is, you're, you're willing for it to be 160% or less what it would be for diesel. You, it, it might be of interest to have this be higher, but not too much higher. So here it's 60% higher, so 160% of the diesel cost. Now, what this plot is showing is the threshold at which uh, an electric bus, um, uh, t what, what the electric bus total cost of ownership is as a percentage of uh, the, its diesel counterpart. So what's interesting here is you can see um, there are thresholds at which certain routes become, uh, meet this criteria uh, earlier than others. So for example, Route 220, 222, 225, and, uh, and maybe Route 230. If you have this threshold of 150 or 160%, then those will meet that threshold uh, to, to electrify. Uh, one can do this similarly for Milano to identify which are the first candidates to consider for um, electrification. And also useful to know is which ones would be the last candidates to consider for electrification. This is in terms of the total cost of ownership. You can also ask the same question in terms of CO2 emissions. So for example, suppose we want that the CO2 emissions for the electric buses are uh, 5, 10, 20 percent what they would be for diesel. So this is significantly less than what they are for, for diesel. For example, 20 percent, 15 percent, or 10 percent. And similarly, um, this analysis will tell you if you are concerned just about CO2 emissions, then it'll tell you if your criteria is 10% of the diesel emissions, then you would consider electrifying routes 214, 215, 222, and 240, uh, for example. And similarly for Milano. 
you could put these two together and we did so where we have the uh, percent of the, the TCO of electrifying as, as a percent of the diesel on the vertical axis. And then here we have the, uh, uh, the, the emissions for uh, electric as a percent relative to diesel. So it's basically taking the information from the previous two and um, putting them together on the same plot. And what the color here represents is essentially the density or number of routes which meet both of these criteria. So for example, um, let's see, actually something mo more interesting might be say, uh, yeah, let's say, let's say this, this cell. This cell basically represents um, that we have a few routes that have a TCO that's 140% of diesel or less. And then their emissions are 10% of diesel or less. And similarly for Boston here. Okay, and so with that, we'll summarize the talk. The objective of this research was to construct a screening tool um, to assess the benefits and costs of electrifying bus routes in major cities across the world using open data. Importantly, remember, the objective is not necessarily to get uh, the most accurate values for total cost of ownership, greenhouse gas emissions, or healthcare costs. Rather, it's uh, to get a, a rough estimate in which all we need is open data. So we're liberated from the weight of having to do a deep analysis and interact with um, deeply with agencies to get, you know, sensor data from the buses at the cost of that, um, you know, and, and uh, we can do that with open data and compare cities across the world. The cost is that uh, we're going to have an estimate that is not as high in accuracy. However, the value we think of this tool is it can be used to prioritize in which cities might you prioritize electrifying buses and, and perhaps even which routes. And then once that prioritization is made with this screening tool, one can then interact with the agency, get higher resolution data to get more accurate estimates for TCO, greenhouse gas emissions, and healthcare costs. So that's the end of the talk. Thanks for listening.